Welcome Trailblazers to today's Salesforce CBQ tutorial video where we'll be taking a look at CBQ price rules and go over some basic configurations to help you get started on using them. First, let's go to the price rules object and see what that field options are and what they mean. Here, I already have two rules set up for an easier explanation, so let's go to the web lead list price rule and see what that looks like. First field is name. This is pretty straightforward and is simply the name of the rule. Good to make sure it's named something relevant to what the rule does. Next is evaluation scope. Here we choose whether Salesforce CBQ evaluates a price rule during bundle configuration or within the call line editor. Configurator follows rules when you're picking different options. The configurator evaluation scope ensures that you follow certain rules when selecting different options. Calculator, which is the one we'll be using for this example, is all about using special rules to calculate prices. The calculator evaluation scope helps calculate the total price of your quote based on special offers, discounts, and quantity. Next is calculator evaluation event. On initialization, after a calculation is triggered, Salesforce CPQ evaluates the price rule during step four of the loading and initialization process. On calculate, means while Salesforce CPQ calculates the quote's price. Before calculate means before Salesforce CPQ calculates the quote's price. And finally, after calculate means after Salesforce CPQ calculates the quote's price. Below this, we have configurator evaluation event, which simply means that this helps indicate when and how the product rule will be checked if the price condition evaluation scope targets the configurator. In our example here, we're not using this the configurator, but it's good to know what they do. Save triggers when the sales rep clicks the save in the configurator. This action is usually the default. Edit means that it will run immediately after a sales rep or rule changes a quantity field in the configurator and when the sales rep clicks save. Below this, we have evaluation order. This one is important because it will specify in what order the rule will be evaluated. Any integer can be written here and the evaluation goes from one to X number. This helps specify which rules should be checked first before others and higher ordered rules will take precedence over lower ordered rules in case of a conflict. Next is active. Straightforward indicates if the rule is active or not. Below this, we have conditions met. This one is important because it indicates the logic of the rules set similar to a formula. You are given the options of any, all, or custom. Below this, we have advanced condition. This is tied to the previous field where if you select the custom option, you have the ability to indicate the specific logic here using a series of and or statements. And finally, we have product and lookup object. Product means this option allows you to specify a specific product you want this rule to apply to. While we can specify specific products in the price condition below, this option will ensure that the rule always checks the specified product such as always applying a 10% discount to the specified product. Lookup object below this is an option that allows you to establish a relationship between the price rule and another object in Salesforce such as a custom object or a standard object like an account or opportunity. For this configuration, we'll be leaving this blank. Now that we've gone over the general fields for the price rule, let's explore the price condition and price actions that will be handling all the work of our rule. Scrolling down a little bit further, we have two rules, so let's take a look at the first one. So here, we have a formula price condition, and we can see the following fields. Condition number. This is the name of the condition and is created by default. Price rule. Is the parent price rule this condition belongs to. The object, we can specify the object of our condition. In this example, we're checking the quote object. In field, we can specify the specific field we want to check for the condition. In this example, we're leaving it blank since we're specifying a formula below. Tested variable, here we can choose the summary variable that the price condition evaluates. And in tested formula, we can define a formula for the price condition to evaluate. In this case, we created a formula that specifies the lead source on the parent opportunity of the quote object we selected above. Important to note here is that field, 
tested variable and tested formula are mutually exclusive and you can only select one type of target when configuring your price condition. Moving down below, we have the filter information that the condition will check for. First is operator. In this field, it indicates the operator we will use for the filter. In this case, equals. Next, we have filter type. Here, we can specify the type of filter we will be using for this condition. In this case, value. Below this, we have filter value. If the filter value is set to value, then you can set the value you want to match. In this example, we're setting web. Below this, we have variable. If your filter type is variable, you can set the summary variable that you want the price condition to use. And below this, we have filter formula. If the filter type is formula, you can set the formula the filter will use. Important to note here that just like with the setup above, you will only ever be able to use one type of filter, either value, variable, or formula. Now that we have this condition set up, we can take a look at the next one, which is a fuel condition. Here, the difference with this condition is simply to the field configuration. In the last condition, we used a formula to check for a field on the parent opportunity, and here, we're simply checking the product code field right on the quote line, as indicated here on field. And in this case, we're checking if a product with the product code webcam is added to the quote. And for the final part of the price rule configuration, we'll be taking a look at price actions. Going back out again, going to our price action. Here, we can specify the action that will execute once the condition is met. The fields are action, which is the same as before, is this is just the name of the action and is created by default. Then we have target object, the object which holds the field in which the action will be executing on. In this example, we're using the quote line. Next is target field, the field in which the action will be executing on. In this example, we're modifying the list price on the quote line. Then we have rule. This is the parent price rule this action belongs to. In this case, web lead list price. And then order. Here you can specify the order number of the rule in case you need them to be executed in a specific order. Below this, we have value where here we can set a specific value we want to insert into the target field. Next, we have source field. Here, you can specify another field on the quote line whose value you want inserted into the target field. Below this, we have source variable. Here, you can set the summary variable that the price action will use. And below this, we have a formula. Here, we can define a formula for the price action to evaluate. In this example, we're using a formula to give a 20% discount from the original price on the quote. And finally, on the last field, we have source lookup field. Here, we can set source lookup field to the API name of the lookup object field to pull the values from. And that's it for how to set up a price rule using condition and action configurations. With this rule in place, we can now apply a 20% discount to webcams that are ordered on a quote with a web lead source. Thank you guys for watching and let's keep blazing the trails ahead.